Maintaining your own wealth and preventing people from coming to Europe illegally at the same time? Illegally? This is an interesting question once you realize that industrialized nations and multinational corporations are taking $10 worth of raw materials from the African continent and yet only return $1 in development aid. Indirectly, one could say that we as consumers too are exploiting the countries of Africa at a ratio of 1 to 10 and as an additional thank you we include climate change with our coal-fired power stations free of charge. In any case, we leave people alone with the consequences of climate change, droughts, heavy rain, or we take our fish craters and empty their shores, as in Senegal. Once all livelihoods have been deprived, people plunge into civil wars for the remaining resources. The warring parties are neatly supplied with weapons, which the above-mentioned corporations are making large profits on. If people want to escape this vicious circle, they will most likely drown in the sea. We are asking ourselves, does this have to be the case? No. Our solution, social entrepreneurship and sustainable technology. If you look at the future in Africa, the topics of energy, water and education are especially serious. Three quarters of Africans live on subsistence farming which means that they eat what they grow themselves. The United Nations has defined 17 sustainability goals to address these challenges. At Africa Green Jack, we have based our own approach on these goals. It is important to realize that 87% of people of the African continent do not have electricity to start with. Those who have access to electricity usually provide themselves with diesel generators and use other fossil fuels to generate light, for example. We can utilize the solar tainer to very quickly and very effectively produce a basic supply of energy as well as to store it until the evening hours. This is also the basis for our development hub to which we then can conceptually connect other services. Through our set connection we can establish a stable internet connection in any place which we can then use for telemedicine services to transmit weather data to police stations or to allow communication with surrounding points of interest. Via partners such as Laptu, we can deliver computers with educational programs to schools and therefore can give boys and girls access to education. Other NGOs and organizations can then build on the system as they use our facility as well as our energy supply for their own projects. A huge issue is the water supply in Sub-Saharan Africa. The availability of water in Africa is still tainted by poor water quality, contamination as well as only seasonal availability. With our modern and almost maintenance-free systems, we drastically reduce bacterial contamination in the water. With modern effective drip irrigation and pumps, we can then also help the agricultural sector increase their yields. When you think of food loss in Africa, then the problems become apparent. 45% of the crops, 60% of all dairy products and up to 70% of all medicine expires simply because there is no cooling solution available. Once we have laid the necessary foundations with our solar tainer, the next step is the cool tainer, a newly developed shared cold storage with which we help the village community to reduce their food loss rates. Our sustainable development approach is rounded off by an electromobility concept using an all-terrain vehicle with a multifunctional platform, either for agricultural, medical or passenger transport. The energy storage for the vehicle can be additionally used to provide energy for light, for example, during evening hours. Once the village community has access to a functioning infrastructure, they can start to deepen their value chains. The agricultural products, which may then be left over, can also be certified as organic food to be exported to Europe. Here we support the village community by founding cooperatives. The perspective of becoming an organic farmer is therefore a worthwhile prospect for many people in the village. They can stay in their traditional and cultural background and still live a content life. After all, people with increased income can also sustainably finance our services. In addition, we are independent of national currency fluctuations. After so many exciting insights into what we're up to, let's look at what Mali and Niger look like today. Together with my wife Ida, we visit the villages and we talk to the women about their concerns, their hopes, but also about their projects which they would like to implement with our electricity. Nine women work in this pottery. The income is enough to provide for their families. During our conversation, the women told us that if lighting was available, they could work in the evening when it's cooler. With more time available, they could sell their products in the capital, which is a day away. Here they could potentially earn up to three times the current price for their pots. Instead of cutting one's feet, a kneading machine could be purchased. With a turntable, productivity can be increased even more as well. Ironing with a coal iron? You could witness this in Germany until the 50s. 
Abdullaye will become one of our commercial electricity customers. Traditional processing of grain, as performed here by 8-year-old Jamila, can be found everywhere. In the here shown Kulikoro region in Mali, as well as in many places, the processing of agricultural products is the most common use for diesel generators. Ismail Koyate has been operating his mill for years with a diesel generator. When he runs the generator, his neighbors do as well, as the noise and the exhaust chase them away. But not only the neighborhood, also Ismail himself has been suffering from massive respiratory problems for two years now. He would immediately be ready to use our electricity, not only for health reasons, but also for economic ones. He spends over 50 euros per month for diesel, although he only runs the smoking machine for two to three hours a day. On one hand, it's very dangerous to his health, and on the other hand, it can take a very long time until it starts up, because the machine is already quite dated. He has to transport it with his mule from one place to the next since the village is quite large. Everyone knows that the same machines run on electricity in the capital, which could only be an improvement to everyone's health. Additionally, the fuel to run it is quite expensive. In Niger, this 70-year-old generator is always started on market day, polluting the entire village. Oil and diesel run directly into the groundwater. But without electricity, it is the only option for any repairs. The hairdresser and barber is also looking forward to the electricity of Africa Green Tech. Up until now, he has been charging his beard trimmer with a car battery. The view into a typical infirmary shows where the big problems in healthcare lie. Without a continuous power supply, the cooling of drugs, vaccines, but also antivenoms is not possible. Of the 1,000 children, 185 do not experience their fifth birthday. Most common early death causes include complications of childbirth and diarrhea. The circumstances under which women give birth to their children in the village are shown here. We want these two newborns, Bala and Yanme, to have a better future in Mali. Therefore, we work hard to be successful with our project. After so much theory, we will have a look at the actual operations. I'll take you to our production facility and we'll show you how the solar tainers actually made. In 2014, the technical concept was first created based on a model. With newly gained experiences of our pilot project, which we started in Mali in 2015, we have developed our current solar tainer model Amali. Its construction you can see here. The technical skills of our experienced steel constructors are very important. For example, the plasma cutting by Bartman. Large machines, such as laser cutters or lathes, are needed to manufacture the ton-heavy support arms. One of the key strengths of Africa Green Tech is that we have control of the entire production, from the development of steel constructions to the statics of the container shell itself. We do not convert sea containers. Instead, the entire product is completely made by us. Compared to a standard sea container, our solar tainer also weighs three times as much. To ensure a sustainable power supply in Africa and a long service life of our solar tainers, we base the plant construction on an aspired lifespan of up to 25 years. During the project financing phase, it is important for our overall concept that the facilities remain mobile. All components are therefore very solidly built to withstand strong storms and winds. Amali offers up to 50 kilowatt peak of solar energy. With modular storage, we can store up to 216 kilowatt hours of electricity in the system. Our solar tainers can be equipped with a state-of-the-art water treatment facility, as well as a high-speed internet satellite system, with which we can remotely control the power plant and supply the village community with internet access via Wi-Fi. After the test phase, the system is technically accepted in Germany and sealed by customs at our offices. These pictures show several solar tainers for Mali and Niger, which each provide up to 3,000 people each year with renewable energy, clean water and internet access. Africa Green Tech acts as a decentralized energy and water utility in Mali and Niger and is currently the only German investor in these countries. We develop, build, finance, transport and operate the systems completely from a single source. In this way, we can ensure fair tariffs for the supply with energy and water and that the plants are properly as well as expertly maintained and operated this is the only way to implement the project for the long term, permanently and sustainably. The personal vision of my wife Ida and I 
is to provide at least 3 million people with clean electricity and water by 2030. But now, together with you, we want to accompany one of our solar tainers to 10,000 kilometers from Frankfurt to Amalul, Niger. After its journey of six weeks, the power plant and our construction team will be greeted with joy by the village community. Due to the lack of available cranes and roads in bad conditions, we use a lifting system especially developed for our projects. Our own unloading system can be transported with a pickup and arrives together with the construction team. The only thing needed is a good eye and some strength. Our rooftop construction provides shade to our system and is an important part for the temperature management of electronics as well as storage devices. Especially in extreme regions near the desert we often reach temperatures of over 50 degrees. At each location we qualify at least three employees, so the transfer of valuable know-how is part of our concept. With over 600,000 fans on Facebook, our project is already the largest social media page on the continent. With our projects, we move and inspire people all over the world, creating small havens of hope and perspectives, as last seen in Amalul, Niger. We are Africa Green Tech, we are social entrepreneurs.